Learning Target 1.1, Functions and Their Properties, Part 1. In this video, we're going to be looking at some terminology that we're going to be using all year long. We're going to be looking at functions and their properties, and we're going to be looking at the definition of the function and what the function notation is. We'll discuss domain and range. We'll look at continuity, increasing and decreasing functions, and boundedness. Let's start with a definition. What is a function? A function from a set D to a set R is a rule that assigns to every element in D a unique element in R. The set D of all input values is the domain of the function, and the set R of all output values is the range of the function. To put that in English, all that means is for every input value, which is often the X, there's only one output which is the y. Let's look at that graphically. Here we have an x and it goes to 1y. x1 goes to y1. And we have x3 and x4 both go to y3. That's okay. Think about it as people and their houses. So our x's are the people and these are their homes. And x1 lives at y2 Sorry, as x2 lives at y2, x1 lives at y1, and both x3 and x4 live at y3. That's okay. That's a function. Now if we look over here, we'll still say on this graph over here, we have people in their homes. That's a funny looking H there, but you get the picture. People in their homes. So x2 goes to y2. We have x3 and y2. 1, both living at y3, we're still okay. The problem comes when we have x1 also living at y1 for whatever reason. If it's a, a vacation home or two sets of parents, they're split up and x1 is, is sharing space homes at Y1 and Y3, as soon as X1 has two different places to go to, it's not a function. Function notation, we're going to be using this. This is Euler. Here's Euler, pronounced Euler. We'll talk about him more later in the year. He's the one that came up with this function notation. And it's pronounced Y equals F of x. Now the f is just a designation. It can be f, it can be g, it can be h. Those are the typical ones that is, are used. And the way you would write it is f of x equals whatever the function is. f of x equals x squared. Uh, g of x equals x plus 2. h of x equals x over 3. So this f of x, g of x, these are going to be giving us our y's. So that's what that means, y equals x squared, y equals x plus 2, y equals h plus 3, but we're going to use the function notation and not have the y in there. Looking at a function graphically, if we want to look at try and decide which is a function and which is not. If we look at this function here, for every x value, there's only one y value. On this one, for every x value, there's only one y value. The problem is here, for on this graph, when x is 0, we've got three different values for y. It's not just at that point, it's also if we you know, pick a, another point here, we have multiple answers for each of those x's. These x's are split between three different homes. So th this one is not a function. Another way that you can look at that is what's called the vertical line test. It is a function if no vertical line intersects the graph in more than one point. So looking back at this, if we took a, 
just draw a vertical line in at any point. <laughs> That's not exactly vertical. Let's try this again. I'm <laughs> learning this program here. I'm not sure how to get that, but assume that's a vertical line. <laughs> we'll hit the, the, the graph one place. Vertical line, we're hitting it at one place. Here, we draw a vertical line in. You can make it like a dollar sign. <laughs> we hit more than one spot on the graph. So again, by the vertical line test, this is not a function. Looking at the domain of a function, the domain of a function is all of the possible x's, possible x values. We have a square root here. Under a square root, we cannot have a negative number. So our x values, so everything underneath the radical has to be greater than or equal to 0. It's OK to be 0 under there, but we can't be a negative number. So if we solve here, we'll get x is greater than or equal to negative 2. If we put this into interval notation, what this tells us is that it has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So we start at negative 2. It can, it can include negative 2. That's what that bracket means. And then it goes on and on to infinity. On infinity, we always have the, the rounded bracket, the parentheses there, because there is no stopping point. Try this one. Find the domain of h of x equals 5 over x minus 3. Things to remember is uh, on this, we are looking for a fraction, so our x minus 3 cannot be equal to 0. We'll bring this to class and we'll discuss it in class. Finding the range of the function. The range of a function is all the possible y's that we'll get. So the range is the y values. So this is a little trickier. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to graph this function and take a look at it. So on our virtual graphing calculator here, I'm going to go to the y equals, and I'm going to put in this function. So it's 2 divided by, and I'll use this xt theta n button, which in this mode will give me x, and then I will graph it. And what this shows me, because we're looking for the range, we're looking for the y's, every y value except for 0 is included. This graph never hits the 0. So if we're listing the range, what we have is x goes from negative infinity to 0, does not include 0, and then the union, picking up 0 on the other side, does not include 0 and goes to positive infinity. And that's the range of that function. Try this one. Find the range of g of x equals 10 minus x squared. Go ahead and graph it on your graphing calculator. Draw a picture of it. And then write the range in interval notation. The next thing we're going to look at is continuity. One of the most important properties of the majority of real-world functions is that they are continuous. That means if you look at the graph of the function, it doesn't come apart at any given point. So this graph right here is continuous at all x's. It just goes in a nice smooth line. 
this graph has a hole. And so it is discontinuous at A, and we have a point here that could fill in that hole. It's a removable discontinuity. It's as if you could take this plug and plug it in there, and then it would become continuous. The thing about removable discontinuity is if you look down at this graph here, we don't actually have to have the point up there. We don't have to have that plug. If it's possible to plug it up, that's called a removable discontinuity. Another kind is a jump discontinuity, and that is pretty self-explanatory. We're coming down here for the x values, and then all of a sudden we have to jump to get our next values. And so that's a jump discontinuity. And the last one is an infinite discontinuity. So looking at, the, at identifying the points of discontinuity, which of the following figures shows functions that are discontinuous at x equals 2? Well, we come over here and we look at x equals 2, x equals 2, and we have a point there. It is continuous. If we come to the other graph over here, at x equals 2, we have a hole, so it is discontinuous or there is not continuity at that point. The next thing we're looking at is increasing and decreasing functions. This is an increasing function because at every f moving from left to right, at every point, the y value is getting larger. Decreasing, always moving from left to right, the y values are getting smaller, so that's a decreasing function. Moving from left, left to right, the y values are staying the same, so it is constant. And this here is what we call a piecewise function. Piecewise. Meaning we can break it into different pieces. So from negative infinity up to negative 2, it is decreasing. Then from negative 2 to 2, it's, in, it's constant at that point. And then from negative 2 to positive infinity, it is increasing. If we're going to analyze a function for increasing and decreasing behavior, this particular function here, the absolute value of x plus 3 minus the absolute value of x minus 2, we're given the different pieces of it. So it's negative 5 if x is less than or equal to negative 3. It's the line 2x plus 1 if between negative 3 and positive 2. And if x is bigger than 2, then we have 5. So just looking at this here on graphing it, here's a graph of that function. So we can see that at this point it's constant, then this line is increasing, and then it is constant again. The last thing we're going to talk about today is lower bound, upper bound, and bounded. A function is bounded below if there is a floor that the function never goes below. That floor is the lower bound. It's bounded above if there's a ceiling, and it's bounded in general if you have a floor and a ceiling. So you could be bounded below with the floor, bounded above with the ceiling, and bounded with both. So I want to take, I want you to graph y equals 2 minus x squared on your graphing calculator, draw a sketch of it, and discuss its boundedness. And just for fun. Dear Math, I am sick and tired of finding your ex. Just accept the fact that she's gone. Move on, dude. See you in class.